Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm going to do a full walkthrough on how to use AutoSKLearn, which is an AutoML library. It basically finds the automatically best machine learning model for you, and we will do both regression and classification completely in Colab. So you don't need a good computer, you don't need any interesting setup, you just need to log on to Colab, and you can do this just like I am right now. So the first thing you need to do after you've connected to an environment is exclamation pip install auto dash sk learn. Now if you run that, it will take a little bit. And then at the end, it'll probably tell you to restart the environment, whether it does or does not make sure that you do go to runtime, and then restart runtime, do not run that again. What you want to do now is just import auto sk learn without the dash. And as long as that goes normally, then you're good to go. Now because I want to show you how to use categorical variables, I'm not using the sample data California housing, I am using a very similar data set on California housing, check the the link in the description, go and download that from Kaggle, upload the CSV into Colab right here if you're following along, and you should be able to get something which I'll magically make appear now. Okay, so however you chose to do that, you should see something like housing.csv, and I'm going to import that in pandas as usual with an import pandas as pd. We will just do df is equal to pd.read csv passing the file name is just housing.csv for me and then i will output the head of that df.head should show something that looks like this it'll look very similar to the normal california housing but at the end here there is another variable there's ocean proximity which is a categorical variable it looks like it's only near bay but there's actually five different categories for this variable and we will use that in the auto sk learn so it's usually easiest if the target variable is the last column in the data frame and as usual we are going to make this the prediction we're going to do regression first so we'll do a regression on the median house value using all of the other variables and we'll treat ocean proximity properly as we'll see as a categorical variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is just move this column to the end and I will do that with getting something called target is equal to the df dot pop so that means take away that column and store it in this variable here df dot pop I give the name of that with median house value okay so that's the one we want to push to the end we have that then we do df is equal to pd dot concat and then we pass the list of them in order with just df and note that this does not have this median house value column anymore we're going to take that and then put target to the end just like that and then we need to do that on axis equals one so it's on the columns and we'll output df dot head again to see that it looks exactly the same, except we've pushed that column to the last one. Now it's just that X, our matrix, is this whole piece here, and then Y is our final column at the end. I'll now show you we actually have a problem with the categorical variable, because df.dtypes, that shows the data type for each of the columns, well, everything's a float64, which is fine, except then ocean proximity, it's calling an object, meaning it doesn't really know what this thing is, that's actually what it uses for strings, but uh, it doesn't really know what it is. So what we're going to do for auto SK learn is use SK learns preprocessing label encoder. So what we'll do is from SK learn dot preprocessing import label encoder le is equal to label encoder bracket bracket. And then if we do df sub ocean proximity, and then we do is equal to le dot fit. So fit it and then actually transform fit and transform df sub ocean proximity. Okay, so we're basically overriding that variable and making it the transform of the label encoder. Well, now what it is, if we output df, we should see in the second last column, well, it's either three or one, or actually it goes from zero, one, two, three, up to four, because there's five different categories. Now, this is usually not advised uh, because it's more so an ordinal category, as in there's kind of uh, three is higher than two, which is higher than one, which is higher than zero, four is the biggest one. Uh, and so you normally use one hot encoding to say they're all just different categories completely. Uh, but this is okay in this case, because we will literally tell Auto SK Learn that it's like, hey, no, one is completely different from three, completely different than two. There's no implied order here whatsoever. Okay, so uh, how we will do this is now very similar to how uh, you'd set up a normal machine learning problem, or this is the way I do it. We're going to first shuffle the data frame. So we'll do df 
is equal to df.sample. That's really just shuffle. If we do frac equals one, so that means replace everything, fraction equals one. Random state, if you want to follow along, I am using random state equals zero. And we need to reset the index because it gets messed up there. So we do df.reset index with drop equals true, otherwise it places an annoying column in place equals true. Just the, just by the way that I'm calling this, I just realized that's an error, sorry. And so there we have it shuffled and then reset the indices. So it really just shuffles the data frame. Now we will split it into just train and test. I'm not gonna do the validation or cross validation idea. We're gonna do split index is equal to int of length of df times whatever percentile you want. I'm gonna do 0.75. So what we're doing here is basically getting, uh, in a second, I'll have the training data is 75% and the test is the other 25%. So we do that with, I'm actually just gonna copy it in because it's a little bit long. Train df is equal to df until the split index. So basically that first 75%, test df is going to be the last 25%. And since we shuffled it, it's completely random. Okay, so I'll just show you the train df dot head for now. And this should look extremely similar to before. You really won't be able to tell a difference. It's just shuffled around and that's what's in the train df. Now I am going to copy most of this in because it's a little bit annoying. I'll explain what it is very clearly. So I'm getting x train and x test and y train and y test. And so I do this through x train is going to be, I convert train df to numpy and then I take all of the rows and then I take all of the columns up until but not including the last column. So that's saying convert that whole data frame to NumPy and then take all of it except the target variable. And that's why I get Y train is that same thing except just the last column there. Okay, so it's X train and then there's Y train. And then we do the same thing with X test and Y test. We're just getting those from the test data frame instead. So then I will output all of their shapes. Don't be alarmed by this. I'm just outputting their shapes and we see that it looks like it's expected. We have nine features for X train, and then we have just the output for train, and then we have nine features for test, and then again, just the output for the test. Now, because we're doing some sort of a categorical encoding, we have at least one categorical variable. We have to do this thing for auto SK learn where we specify what it calls the feature types. So we will make feature types is equal to, well, the first eight are numerical, and then the last one is categorical. So we have the list of numerical, we have to write it just like that, times eight, and then plus the list of categorical. So that way it lines up exactly saying what each variable is in the features. So the first eight are numerical, the last one is categorical. So we have that, and I'll just show you that as expected feature types says that. Now for a regression problem, we'll do import auto SK learn dot regression. And then I'm going to copy this piece in because it's a little bit long again. I will explain the important pieces. We get some variable, that's our model. Auto SK learn regressor is equal to auto SK learn dot regression dot auto SK learn regressor, just like it's a random forest regressor or any other sort of regression model. And then there's this piece which kind of specifies how much time you're gonna take. Now, just like the other SK learn stuff, you have to fit models. So we're going to do the name of that auto SK learn regressor dot fit. We're going to fit it with, of course, X train and Y train. And then again, because we have the categorical variable, we need to specify feet type is equal to whatever we called that list, which was feature types. So I'm gonna specify that. Actually, I just tested this again. You're going to want to make this value equal to 60 and this one equal to 240 so that it doesn't run into an error. And if you do, then maybe try bumping them up again. After that, you're going to want to print the auto SK learn regressor dot leaderboard to see the different models that it produces. So it's giving 44% to one gradient boosting model, 40% to another, and 16 to another. So it's using its final predictions as a weighted average of these three models here. So let's evaluate the performance of this model. It is a regression problem, and my preferred metric is the mean absolute error. So I will do from sklearn.metrics import the mean absolute error as MAE, and I will calculate the MAE on Y train versus the auto SK learn underscore regressor dot predict 
on X train. Okay, so this is the predictions on the training set. This is the actual for the training set. And so we'll calculate the error of that. And then over here, I'm just going to copy what I already have, which is exactly the same as what's on the screen, except replacing train with test. So this is going to be the test error, and this is going to be the train error. We'll output that and see that the training error is about 18,000, and the test error is about 30,000, which is really, really good. So this made an amazing model. If we're only off on average by $30,000, where the prices of these, you know, the prices are really, really big sometimes, sometimes they're a lot smaller, that's a really good score. All right, so that's auto SK learn with categorical variables for regression. And if you wanted to get predictions and actually use the model, you would just do auto SK learn regressor.predict with whatever NumPy array you wanted to feed to that. As long as it matched the same as it was trained by, it should be good to go and it will output all of its predictions. Now we'll do it for classification, which is actually gonna be even easier because for this one, we're not gonna use any categorical variables in the input. Of course, classification means that the output is categorical. We're going to do multi-class classification. It's pretty much the same thing for binary. We will do from sklearn.datasets import load underscore iris to get the iris data set. It's about predicting which flower something is. So we'll do iris is equal to load iris like that. And then we'll get, I'm gonna put a two on the end of them just to distinguish it from the previous section. We'll have x2 and y2 is equal to iris.data. So the data goes to the x and the iris.target is going to go to the y. Now, if we have x2.shape and y2.shape, we will see a significantly smaller data set. We have simply 150 different rows and the X is going to have four different columns. They are all just numerical columns. If we output X2, it just looks like that, different numbers. And Y2 is different classes. So Y2 has values ranging from zero to one to two. So three different classes actually. To split into train and test, I'm going to copy this block because it is pretty boring. You've probably seen it before. It is going to be from sklearn.model selection, import the train test split function, and we get X train. Again, I'm just putting twos on them to distinguish from the other stuff. X train two, X test two, Y train to Y test to is the train test split of X2, Y2, and the test size I'm making 0.4. So that means the training is going to have 60%. The test will have 40. It's a little bit bigger because the data set is very small. And so I need more to evaluate. Uh, and I'll set random state equal to one. And then I just output their shapes like this and we should see similar to above, except now the training has 90 values and the test has 60 values. Now for classification, it's going to be very, very similar. We will do import auto sklearn.classification and auto sklearn classifier is equal to auto sklearn.classification dot auto sklearn classifier. And for these values, you can probably get away with making them smaller. In fact, I'm going to decrease it by, you know, basically a third. So this will be 20 and this is going to be uh, 80. And I'm just going to copy in the fitting as well. It's very, very similar. Auto sklearn classifier dot fit with the X train of the Y train and I'm going to let that run. It should have no problem finishing because there's only 90 rows in the training set. All right, that fit through a couple warnings, but they're just warnings. It actually worked just fine. And now we will do print the auto sklearn classifier dot leaderboard to see its different models that it's using in the ensemble. And so what it does is many, many, many different models. Some I haven't even heard of, like I do know random forest, screening boost, the extra trees. I think MLP means a multi-layer perceptron or a basic neural network, a Gaussian naive Bayes. Now to see how good this model is, its classification, probably the best thing to do is use the classification report. So we will do from sklearn.metrics import the classification report and then we will print the classification report where we pass that first y test and then we pass that the predictions auto sk learn underscore classifier dot predict with we'll do this for just x train sorry actually i will match that so this will be y train just spell reort instead of report this should be y train 2 and this should be x train 2 we will output that and see that it classifies the training set very, very well, but we don't really care about that too much. We will look instead of the classification report on the test. So we'll do Y test two and then X test two. And we can see also 
it does extremely well with a macro average F1 of 0.97. So that's the average of these three F1 values across each class. It does extremely well on, you know, even not very much training data. This model kicks butt. Okay, so it did excellent on the regression problem. It did excellent on the classification problem. You know, pretty much anything tabular like this, where you have multiple columns of data trying to predict something else, whether it's regression or doing classification, it's gonna do really, really well. And unless there's some clever feature engineering you think you can do, then it's probably gonna beat something that you can do yourself. Again, if you wanted to actually make use of this model, you would end up getting it and then trying to predict with it. So you'd get some sort of new array you'd want to predict on for the inputs, you would run that and get its outputs and those are your different classes right there. So if this video was helpful, please drop a like, it really helps. If you're not subscribed to the channel, check out some of the other videos, you know, see if they help you out. And uh, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time guys.